Good evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today waded into the row over the farm bill, saying that these bills were the requirement of the 21st century and that those opposing it were just scared of losing control. He also said that there was no question of doing away with the minimum support price. But the ruckus over everything that happened in Parliament yesterday is continuing. Uh, eight opposition uh, MPs were suspended, but they are they're refusing uh, or were refusing to leave Parliament, protesting outside and saying that what happened yesterday and the manner in which the, the voice vote was pushed through was wrong. So both sides taking a very, very strong position on the matter and specifically on the question of how that voting was conducted and the scenes that we saw of disruption in Parliament. So I don't think we've heard the last of this right now. Um, the question of the bills itself, of course, is now nearly a done deal. If you go to the president, and presumably he will be signing, uh, signing them and giving his assent to them. But what happens with the MMPs and what happens as an aftermath of the disciplinary proceedings is something that we'll have to see. All right, let's quickly take you through all the big stories of the day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday once again hailed the passage of the two contentious farm bills in the Rajya Sabha and congratulated all farmers. Prime Minister was speaking at a virtual event to launch new projects in Bihar. Amid oppositions and farmers' protests, the Prime Minister said that the bills were the need of the 21st century and will help increase the farmers' income. The PM reiterated his assurance regarding the MSP system and said it will continue unhindered. मैं देश के प्रत्येक किसान को इस बात का भरोसा देता हूं कि एमएसपी की व्यवस्था जैसे पहले चलती आ रही थी वैसे ही चलती रहने वाली है in unprecedented scenes in the Rajya Sabha on Monday, the eight suspended opposition MPs refused to leave the House, leading to ruckus and repeated adjournments. The chair kept questioning the MPs to leave the House, but the members refused to budge even as their colleagues kept on raising slogans against the government. After repeated adjournments, the Rajya Sabha was adjourned for the day without any work. The opposition said the members should have been given a chance to explain, but the Rajya Sabha chair said the decision was based on a government motion. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee on Monday alleged that the two farm bills passed in Rajya Sabha would deprive farmers of minimum support price and will lead to famine in the country. She said even as the country is reeling under COVID-19 pandemic, the centre is trying to create famine through these farm bills. The Trinamool Congress Supremo asked that all opposition parties come together and fight these bills to the nail. After two contentious farm bills were passed by Rajya Sabha amid a pandemonium, a number of non-NDA parties wrote to President Ramnath Kovind over the manner in which the government pushed through its agenda and urged him not to grant his assent to the proposed legislations. According to reports, leaders of various political parties, including Congress, the left parties, NCP, DMK, Samajwadi Party, Trinamool Congress and the RJD have in a memorandum to the President sought his intervention in the matter and asked him him not to sign the bills. The bills will become a law only after the President grants his assent to them. Reports said the opposition parties have described the manner in which the bills were passed in Rajya Sabha on Sunday as murder of democracy by the ruling BJP. They have also sought time from the President for a meeting, likely on Tuesday. The heckling of Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman Harivansh in the House during the passage of farm bills has hurt the prestige of Bihar and people of the state will give a befitting reply to this, the leaders of the state's ruling BJP-led National Democratic Alliance said on Monday. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar said, whatever happened in Rajya Sabha on Sunday was very wrong and cannot be condemned enough. He was speaking at a virtual program attended by Prime Minister Modi, who laid the foundation stone of nine highway projects and inaugurated optical fiber internet service. Deputy Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi said, people of Bihar, which is going to the assembly poll soon, will give a befitting reply. The Narcotics Control Bureau, which is probing the drug angle in actor Sushant Singh Rajput's death, will likely issue summons to actors Sara Ali Khan, Rakul Preet Singh and designer Simone Kambata. According to a report in Hindustan Times, NCB's Deputy Director KPS Malhotra confirmed that Sara Rakul and Simone will be summoned this week under Section 67 of the NDPS Act. NCB had previously said that they were named by Rhea in the drug case during her questioning. The 
center on Monday again pressed for regulations for the digital media, which is spreading venomous hatred and is involved in deliberate instigation of violence and terrorism, calling for regulation on web magazines, web-based news channels and web-based newspapers. The center told the top court that digital media is totally uncontrolled. The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting further added that the digital media uses spectrum and internet, which is public property. It argued that if print or electronic media is regulated any further, they would be incentivized to use digital media to put out their content. India's coronavirus tally moved closer to 55 lakh with nearly 87,000 new infections in the last 24 hours. The total number of coronavirus cases mounted to 54 lakh 87,580, while the death toll climbed to 87,882, with the infection claiming 1,130 lives in a day. Data released by the Health Ministry on Monday morning showed close to 44 lakh people have recovered so far from the virus, pushing the national recovery rate to over 80%. The COVID-19 case fatality rate has further declined to 1.6%. There are a little over 10 lakh active COVID cases in the country as of now, which comprises 18% of the total caseload. Marking a historic first, two officers, Sub-Lieutenant Kumudini Tyagi and Sub-Lieutenant Riti Singh will be deployed on Navy warships as part of the ship's crew. The Indian Navy does not deploy women on warships for lengthy durations due to a host of reasons including the lack of gender-specific bathroom facilities. As the two officers embark on the warship, equality in the services will be redefined. In another major development, the Indian Air Force has shortlisted a woman fighter a pilot to operate in its fleet of Rafale fighter jets. A woman fighter pilot of the Indian Air Force will soon join the newly inducted Rafale fighter fleet as one of its crew flying the multi-role aircraft, official sources told PTI on Monday. The woman pilot has been flying MiG-21 fighters and was selected to join the Ambala-based Golden Arrow Squadron operating the Rafale jets, the report said. The report also said that the woman pilot is undergoing training now. In 2018, flying officer Avani Chaturvedi scripted history by becoming the first Indian woman to fly a fighter aircraft solo. Chaturvedi was part of a three-member woman team commissioned as flying officers in July 2016. The other two women pilots were Bhavna Khan and Mohana Singh. At present, the Indian Air Force has 10 women fighter pilots.